Hi, my name is Carrie, and you are here because you want to learn how to use MySQL. If you're on a Windows 10 like me, you need PuTTY. You can download that from www.putty.org. It's P-U-T-T-Y, T as in Tom. I already have it pinned to my desktop, but if you downloaded it and you're not sure where it went, the command prompt is your friend. We're using the Ds on host, and port number 22 is pretty typical. These are all default settings. I'm going to hit enter to click open. These credentials were given to me by my university. All right, now we're in. It kind of looks like the terminal on a Mac or a Apple computer. I just got rid of the command prompt and putty because we don't need it. We are now in the Ds on host. Now it behaves similarly to the terminal, but it's not the same. For example, let's do that with all caps with the ES, uh, the SQL, this SQL, it doesn't work. Let's try MySQL just like that, and it works. Typically, if you think that something should work and it doesn't, go to the caps. That's always where I go to first. Otherwise, a typo. Uh, if it's not that, you probably did something wrong, but those are so often the problem. All right, so we're, we're here, right? We're in databases <clears throat> that are floating around in space. Now, I'm not sure if the databases that I need are even in this bubble. Let's check it out. Okay, I'm looking for KCURS2, and I see it here. If you are here and you can't find the databases that you think should be there, you are probably in the wrong little bubble. You might be looking for MySQL on your actual hard drive. Maybe you downloaded it. Maybe you're looking in the wrong Dizon host. I don't know. But if you're like me and you can see the database that you want to be looking for, just go to Use. Now, if you want to use another one, you don't have to exit or anything like that. You can just do Use the other guy. You can always, even if you're already in a database, you can always look at all your databases. Now I'm going to go back to papers 2 and I'm going to do that. Now, these are the tables that we're going to be messing with today. We have games and we have players. Typically, it's a good habit just to explain your games, explain your players. What this shows is metadata, data describing data. Don't worry too much about the null. Uh, these are integers with 11, you know, bases. Um, under players, we have username, password, activation status. That sounds like stuff to describe players. Makes sense. Good. Under games, this is regarding a man call a game. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, we have a certain level, wins, losses, draws, total. Okay, now we have a common element, our IDX. This is short for index, which is a pretty literal way to explain what a key is. A key in a database is a common entity that two or more tables will share to refer to the same entry. This is useful when we want to select all of our things from all of our tables. Now we are going to select everything, that's what the asterisk stands for, from both tables separated by a comma, nothing else, we don't need an ampersand or anything like that, where the players dot index or the players index equals the games index. We don't want to forget that semicolon and the computer makes a weird noise whenever we go too far to the right. Alright, there it is. We've got our index is 1, carry, password, activation status, blah, blah, blah. Now notice we have this redundant index. If we want to get rid of that, we just have to change this a little bit. Right now we're saying select all. So select all this index, level, wins, losses, all this index 2, blah, blah, blah. So since I have players here first, the players things are going to come first. So I'm going to say, give me my players index give me my username, etc. everything else. Make sure you don't 
include the other index. I'm not including this. And make sure all of your spelling is correct. Notice how all we got rid of was that last index, so, you know, eliminates redundancy in case you want to take a screenshot or copy and paste or, you know, show something to your client or boss that isn't redundant and ugly. Now, eventually, you're probably going to have to update one of these tables. If you update one table, you set something equal to something else where the condition is there. So let's set activation status to equal true where the index is greater. I'm sorry, we're going to have to use players, not games. Players set activation status to true where index is greater than or equal to 4. Now I'm going to hit up to get to my previous statements, and I'm going to go like this again. Notice how activation status has now changed to true, where index is greater than or equal to 4. Don't forget about that semicolon. Hit exit to keep escaping, and you are now in my SQL beginner. Thank you, and watch my other videos.